Back to 1986 with Amstrad Computer User. Yes, long time viewers of the channel will know that um, I was doing a semi regular thing looking at old computer magazines. We looked at personal computer news when, and then we started looking at Amstrad Computer User and just things overtook me. And I actually recorded an episode on my old studio PC here with these very issues we're going to look at. And it all went horribly wrong and the PC wasn't up to it. and It was a lot of wasted time. And then, well, yeah, so it's probably well over a year since we've last done this, but we are back with Amstrad Computer User. We're going to look at some issues from 1986. If this is the kind of thing you like to see, great. If not, then I don't know, go watch Ashens or Geiger Punk or Rob Dion in Australia or, or Nicky and Bunty over on Twitch or something. But I like to mix things up here on Univision. So this, in fact, this issue here, a Amstrad computer user. It's the January 1986 edition. It is the first computer magazine that was ever in my house. That is correct. We've got our Amstrad computer, Christmas 1985, along with a Amstrad computer club subscription. And therefore, what came, what the club subscription effectively gave you was a year's worth of Amstrad computer user delivered to your door and some software discounts and so on. But it was mainly about having ACU. So, yeah, this is the very first computer magazine I ever saw. And ACU like to have pictures of Amstrad in unusual situations on their cover. So we have a Christmassy looking 6128 with the promise of Mode 3 revealed. So let's scroll down and see what we've got. This computer isn't super fast, so sorry about the frame updates. Advert for international basketball with Tim Vine there as a basketball player. Never played that game, never heard much about it. Commodore 64 screenshot on there. And Andrew Spencer Elite. And Andrew Spencer Elite. What? Anyway. AMX mouse for the CPC there. We thought it was about time we put you in the picture. And uh, yeah, the CPC got a mouse. So uh, £69, £70 for the mouse. Um, you've got a little bit of software with it. Oh yeah, look, they've done there. They've uh, copied the Apple Mac advert, haven't they? That's what they've done there. Just move my mouse a minute. And then we have the contents. And it's published by... Oh, yeah, that's the important thing as well, because we haven't done this for a while. Look at the address for Amstrad Computer User, 169 Kings Road, Brentwood, Essex. That is Amstrad HQ. Amstrad Computer User was published by Amstrad. Unlike, well, you know, even official PlayStation magazine was published by Future Publishing, but Amstrad Computer User was a national newsstand magazine that at one stage was selling about 70 or 65,000 copies a month. I think something about that. Um, that's published by Amstrad and run out of their own HQ. So, goodbye, William. William Pohl, General Manager of Amsoft and Managing Director of Amstrad Computer User, has left Amstrad. Let's zoom in. Uh, yeah, William Pohl, big influence on the Amstrad CPC project. And uh, he then went on to kind of found Amsoft and Amstrad Computer User as well. Um, and he talks about what he's going to be doing at New Star Software. So, um, yeah, we're still going to be writing for Amstrad Computer User. We have news of new Amstrad CPC software, including Cauldron, um, being announced for the CPC Quiz Quest, Quiz Quest a game I've never heard of before, being announced by Alligator, and Firebird have launched their budget software at £3.95 on Super Silver. I assume that turned into Firebird Silver at some stage. And a bug bite have been resurrected by Argos Press Software. They're going to sell budget games. So, uh, yeah. What on earth is this advert? For Brain Ready to You Brain R Combat. What? 
What is this? What on earth is this game? Doctor Who and the Minds of Terror? Micropower are advertising a Doctor Who game? What? Why on earth would you do that? I, I'm, I'm right, aren't I? This is an advert for Doctor Who in the Minds of Terror. Not just a general micropower advert that's got a Doctor Who in the Minds of Terror box on the bottom right-hand side. W wouldn't you have a picture of Colin Baker and uh, Perry at this stage on there? That's astonishing. Why would you pay for an advert for a Doctor Who game that doesn't mention Doctor Who in it? And I don't want people saying nasty things about Colin Baker in the comments below. That this is this is this is utterly bizarre. Uh, Frank Bruno competition. Someone's run a elite Frank Bruno game. Letters page. ACU advert. Another elite game. Elite are really going. Coca Tony Wolf as well, which never came out on the CPC until it was released on budget. This never came out. I mean, let's just look at his face a minute there. I mean, I can't see what the point of the appeal of this game is, but, um, Here's the charts for up to the week, uh, up to the 9th of November 1985. Number one is Finders Keepers. Number two, Formula One Simulator. Number three, Soul of Robot. Number four, Non Terra Aquarius. Wow, top four positions all occupied by Mastertronic budget games. At uh, And yeah, they've come straight in. Two of those that come straight in at number three and number two. And you get the market strength as well. So it doesn't tell you how many they're selling, but you get a market strength which is based on this, how many the number one game has sold. And uh, interesting to see Finders Keepers above F1 Simulator. Uh, especially when 3D Grand Prix by Amsoft is at number six. Very similar game to Formula 1 Simulator. Got to review that one day. And uh, Chiller as well is at number seven. And for all the advertising, there's only one elite game in... Well, presuming it only just came out. Although, no, no. A Frank Bruno's Boxing was only at number two last month. Dropped to number eight. Locomotion by Mastertronic at number 11. Lords of Midnight by Amsoft at 15. Sorcery Plus by Amsoft at 14. Amsoft were still major forces in the CPC software chart at this time. Remember, Am Amsoft, with the idea was to get as many games onto the platform as possible, although Amstrad Am didn't want to run a software house forever uh, because they didn't see that as their job. They saw the job as Amsoft to establish the platform and provide not a totally risk-free, but a fairly risk-free option for people to put their games out. So, I mean, for example, Raid there is listed by US Gold, but that actually was originally, I think, released by... Oh, yeah, there, there was an Amsoft version of Raid, um, I think Amsoft and US Gold fell out. I mean, because Amsoft royalties were apparently pretty bad. And down at number 19, Match Day, another Amsoft game at 20, the diabolically awful Airwolf. And have a strange loop, the kind of follow up to Sorcery Plus, really. And uh, by the same code as anyway, but uh, wasn't as good. Adverts are always interesting. Let's zoom in on this one. What we got available. Plenty of software available for the CPC at this time. It's not been out... Well, it's been like 18 months now, really. Officially launched April 85. We're now in, what, January 86. Magazine out December 85. And that's a good selection. The machine's really established itself of of books, games, utilities, educational software, and all sorts. This is what you need for a system to have this kind of depth 
available. People say, why do machines like the Dragon fail the C16 and, and so on? It's because you don't have depth in the software library is a good part of it. And the CPC is getting a, a really good depth in the. I mean, people to be publishing books, um, that requires people from a completely different industry, the publishing industry, to come in and go, this machine is worth publishing for. We can sell enough books to make this to make this happen. So introducing 464 machine code, um, practical programs for the CPC 464, starting basic, although why you'd CPC manual does that pretty well. And um yeah, and educational software and all sorts of things. Who's this? That's uh New Crown Computers. I don't know where they're based where are they based? Luton. They're based in Luton. Let's zoom out again. Big advert for Protex now. Fantastic word processor. It's now out. And uh, I don't think the ROM's out yet. We can have a look at this advert now. Best CPC word processor ever. Really, brand word was pretty good. Protex on ROM with Prospel, the spell checker. Wow. Th three key presses, you're straight in instantly. And, um, it, well, you can see it compares itself to Tazword slash Amsword on the right. That's what Taz Word's called on CPC, how much faster Protex is. I mean, a find and replaced. Um, 1.7 seconds on Protex takes 34 seconds on Am's Word. Um, merge, you can't merge a file, but you can on Protex. And yeah, and that even loading, you know, loading time on disk is better. Uh, on instant on ROM. I mean, it's brilliant. And there's, it, all those years later, you know, right at the end of the CPC's commercial life, they were still selling it. And Amstrad Computer User recommend and Amstrad Action, sorry, by that stage, always recommending Protex as the as the kind of go to word processor. It's absolutely brilliant. Always it brilliant word processor. Brilliant. This is a big old feature in this issue of Amstrad Computer User. How to basically hack your copy of Sorcery Plus, the biggest game on the Amstrad at the moment. You can hack in and see all the sprites and do stuff to the game um, with the utility set. It's also got a wonderful map of the game showing you where all the locations are, which I found very useful when playing the game. Color Printer. Fax plays the new color printer and finds it a little bit disappointing. Six kilos. Six kilos. Woohoo. Right, uh, yeah, that's going to be... What's it look like? Oh, there's, there's some demo print out from it. I bet it's really expensive. I bet this thing is super expensive. £331 without VAT. Uh, that's quite a lot. Fine for churning up fast qual quantities of colour text. Don't count on the quality of the colour graphics, though. That's quite expensive, isn't it? Tasman Software are advertising Tasword slash Amsword, depending if you bought it from Amsoft or directly from Tasman, and um, yeah, I mean, contrast that to the uh, more polished advert than Protext, but um, can't really shout about the stats, can you really? Advert for the PCW8256. Yeah, the machine is there, it's only been out a few months. Came at the same time as the 6128. Don't look at the price of the PCW8256 or you won't believe what is to follow because the 8256 is a complete word processing system and a complete personal computer at a completely unbelievable price. It has a high resolution screen with 90 columns and 32 lines of text. I always forget that. I always say it's 80 columns, but it's 90 columns. High speed RAM disk, 82 keyboard, 
designed for word processing uh, that has pull down menus all for 399 integrated printer letter quality printing questionable but don't don't uh, mention that to alan because he gets upset and uh all for 399 plus that and a little plug for dixon's Garwood, support for the Amstrad user in 86, Chelmsford, 02454567. Garwood, support for the Amstrad user in 86. And uh, yeah, if you check that address, it is just a house. And they're selling software and they uh, they usually sell computers as well. But this is, I suppose, this is the new things they've got. It's quite a quite stretched out for a full page advert, really, isn't it? You think that'd be a quarter, enough content for a quarter of a page? An Amstrad computer user have Amstrad business computing pull out in the middle for the Amstrad or the Amstrad PCW and the business use in the 6128. This is eventually split out into its own separate magazine, um, concentrating mainly on the PC stuff, I think. Game section, Mars Spot gets a um, rating of 18. On the run, not to be confused with Monty on the run. Design Design. Hmm. Not a game I've played. Secret Diary of Adrian Mole. Save money by the book. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, that is the kind of point of the game, isn't it, really? It's, uh, if you know the book, you can just type, you know, run through it all. World Series Baseball, which is by Amsoft. Oh, no, it's by A Imagine. I'm so sorry. But, oh, it's Hardball that was put out by Amsoft, of course. Um... Of course, they don't give it an overall score. They've got its graphics, first impression, sound, lasting impression, polish and value system at this stage. Colleen Limited, Unit 7, Highfield Industrial Estate, Ferndale, Rodder in Mid Glamorgan. And uh, phone Tony Pandy, 435-709. And they've got some kind of adventure game called Banshee. An epic Irish adventure. Can you say Clarine from the evil clutches of the Banshees? Find the treasures of Ireland and make good your escape. Over 200 locations. God, I, I, I wonder if these bits of software still exist. If they are archived. Uranium. Rumour has it they're rich deposits of uranium in Ireland. This Christmas, give yourself a soft present from Colleen to ensure your happiness and hours of pleasure through 1986. On your Amstrad CPC 6128. I, yeah. Bit weird. Uh, she has a payroll system as well. A clean payroll system. On the Amstrad 8256. Doppelganger by Alligator. Bounty Bob Strikes Back, which I don't think I've ever played on the Amstrad. Bruce Lee. Very addictive, despite bugs. Ah, uh, yeah, it, it is pretty bugged, isn't it? <laughs> and into the back of the magazine, there's a good selection of adverts. Again, it goes back, back to what I was saying about depth of support for the system. Astrology for beginners. Teach yourself astrology using your Amstrad. Only £11.50. No previous knowledge required. Again, how much of this software is now completely lost? Amstrad in Manchester. Ams Club. What's that? That's a, that's a world's smallest advert there. Can't even read it. Tape magazine. A oh, bi monthly tape magazine. Okay. And Amstrad advertising their own peripherals there the horrific amstrad joystick 14.95 tv modulator 29.95 it's a psu with a bit of rgb to composite and then to uhf circuitry 
disk drive with interface and CPM for 644159. We have that's got a power supply and all sorts of things with it. Stereo speed synthesizer and stereo amplifier, $29.95, quite expensive for a couple of cheap car speakers, but hey ho. Light pen, $19.95. RS232 serial interface with ROM software, £50. Essential for programmers. Well, programmers, when you're doing things like squirting your data across to other machines, that's the kind of thing the Oliver Twins would have used to port Dizzy to the Spectrum originally, I'm guessing, because you, unless their Ivan Link program, or I, sorry, unless their Ivan Link soft, uh, software or hardware, sorry, plugged directly into their CPC, I think it's more likely it went through a serial interface. Could be wrong. Could be wrong. CPC 6128 disk drives 50 pounds less because it doesn't need the power, the extra stuff. Only a power supply is 99, 99.95.159 for an Amstrad DMP 2000 printer. So this edition of Amstrad computer users come from Germany and uh, they're looking at the serial interface on the front. So in a Hitchhiker's Guide, the Galaxy as well. And the magazine's already had a revamp. Because we've got a much nicer contents page there. News page. Sometime in January, one, the one minute Amstrad computer was sold. No fanfare, no presentation. No one even seems to know if the computer was a 464, a 6128 or an 8256. So that's quite a lot, really. Amstrad only started selling them in the well, late summer 84. So when the actual numbers started coming through uh, the real the real amount of kind of you know proper cpcs and stuff so yeah not not bad at all for selling one million computers most of which would have been cpcs nearly all of which would have been cpcs computers against drugs there's a there's a new compilation called off the hook this is the time of zamo and stuff like that isn't it so uh, let's hope the tail of the tape will bring in at least about £100,000. Soft Aid raised £322,000. And uh, Amstrad computer users are no longer taking classified adverts or semi-display. The smallest ad we can now take is an eighth of a page. Uh, for further details, phone Jane Nolan. So it's, it, it shows how Amstrad computer users are going up in the world. That they're now, well you can see how many adverts were in the previous edition we looked at. They don't have to worry about the kind of smaller adverts. The Amstrad Computer Show. Yes, you too can take your Amstrad to a show, just like this lady here with her Amstrad. Or well, it's the first northern Amstrad Computer Show. If you're an Amstrad or just thinking about buying one, this is a show you cannot afford to miss. So who's running this? Is it Amstrad or is it someone else? Europa House. Is there someone based in Europa? Is that? Database Publications. Computing with the Amstrad. So they're running the trade show. Well, they're running Amstrad computer users are running adverts for basically a rival. But uh, yeah, their money's as good as anyone, I suppose. On the letters page, and uh, we have a Amstrad PCW8256 user saying, until December 85, I knew next to nothing about home computers, nor wanted to. I bought a PCW8256 because it bought a complete word processing. Uh, it bought a complete word processing within my price range. Millions of people bought them exactly for that reason. It, uh, you know, it, it was a, to give word processing to the masses, which is what the PCW did. The machine is ideal for the purposes which I acquired it, and I'm delighted with it. However, just because I'm not an arcade freak doesn't mean the machine must never be used for recreational purposes. Mate, you bought PCW? My children keep asking if they can play games on my new computer. Oh, your poor kids. Will the answer forever have to be no, there aren't any to play? ACU say the 8256 is a business machine, therefore you're absolutely forbidden under pain of being forced to read the LocoScript manual to play games on it. Seriously, though, there aren't too many games around. 
There are a number of text adventures that run under CPM, or you can buy some of the books that list basic games. Um, Amsoft do intend to release a 3D chess uh, more full report soon. And it's going to be a little while before the software publishers get their heads around it and start converting stuff, um, partly because the PCW is quite a hard system to do graphics for because the screen was completely optimised for text. And therefore, when you started doing graphics, apparently you had to start addressing, I think, like, like four um, screen locations at once, or, or memory locations, sorry, at once, to start drawing graphics. So it's quite complicated, but it could do it. And uh, we did see more PCW games. Uh, you know, give it give it another six months, and I think you start to get things like Batman coming out. Charts for the month. They sold a million is number one. Ya Kung Fu is number two. A 3D Grand Prix by Amstrad, or Grand Prix 3D, is up at number three. Formula 9 Simulator is number four. So the full-price Amsoft game is beating the budget-priced Mastertronic game. Interesting. Soul of a Robot, number five. Finders Keeper, number six. Caves of Doom, number seven. And uh, Bruce Lee has come in at number 17. And uh, Spellbound by Mastertronic also down at number 19. Anything else in there? No, all the suspects I'd expect. Highway Encounter by Vortex down at number 20. Ah, advert for Mini Office 2, Database Proudly Presents. This has another advert from Database Publications. Mini Office 2, a big seller because it gave you... I say it's graphics pack. It's a, it's a word processor. It's a database. It's a spreadsheet. It's a graphics pack, which is basically graphical visualizations of the spreadsheet it's a comms pack it's a label printer all for just 14.95 on tape 19.95 on disc it was all it was well it was a spreadsheet i had and i did use it but the word process was pretty useless game section battle of the planets by microgen spitfire 40 We've reviewed on Chini Vision. It's by Mirasoft and Amsoft. Three Weeks in Paradise advert there. A Spellbound gets a good review. It says $3.99, which I don't think so. I think it was $2.99. And that's it for games for this month. A review of a new light pen by Dart. Light pen's the fad of the time. And you can see it there. Plugs on the back of your Amstrad. You're supposed to be able to draw with them, but I mean, they were faintly ridiculous. Um, drawing anything on dark background is almost impossible. You must change kind of the ink to something more garish. I mean, imagine drawing on a screen. The pen works quite happily on the green screen or colour monitor, even on televisions using an MP1 and a bit of knob twiddling. Um, spray painting confuses the heck out of most colour TVs, though, uh, even if the light pen does work properly. I think, yeah, I yes, yeah. I pff, Light pens, what a fad they were. I don't know why they existed or, or what. And there you go, there's an advert for it. You'd think they'd stump up a few more quid for one right next to the feature, but no, it's down here. And uh, there you go. It cost £39.95 for a rubbish bit of tech that's attached to your computer. And I cannot see... Did any serious graphics artist ever use... Um, I mean, I mean, it says, like, select any one of the 64,000... Pixel. Are there 64,000 pixels? I suppose there. In mode 2, there is. I, mean, I can just imagine trying to select one pixel with a light pen. Just just think about that for a second. Um, that's going to be quite, quite, uh, quite something. Advert for the Doors of Doom by Amsoft. Uh, interesting game, not... Well, no. <laughs> yeah, it's it's by GM Software. The main character looks like Roland in Roland in Space and Roland in Time, but they didn't brand it as a Roland game. Um, but, yeah. 
Amsoft Gold, of course, was the label they invented to give an extra sense of quality because Amsoft got itself a bit of a reputation for publishing any old rubbish. I think that's supposed to be Alan Sugar with his van, but this is the Amstrad computer user uh, stuff they f will, f will flog you. And Alan's flogging you stuff out the back of his van there. It's August! And uh, Denmark have got a game called Gladiator out. It's got a CPC 6128 dressed up with battle dress on the front. That sand can't be any good for the computer. But uh, yeah, got a printer run down as well. Oh, big advert for the Amstrad modem. Apparently very good value for money. And a decent modem, because Amstrad got it made by someone else, basically. And then they're stuck there. Kind of name on it but apparently it's very good Ah, uh, made by pace i see yeah there you go see i'm telling you this stuff and it's on the screen pace made it and amstrad sold it there's this month's uh listing there and you've got the amstrad business computing section expanding considerably as well and we for tube aruba Read that on the channel probably three, four years ago. And the Amstrad computer show there. CPC version of Dragon's Lair announced, but that's going to be good. Card. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah, going to be well. Huh. Advert for Amdrum, 3495. Was a nice advert. Computer breakdown can stop your business in its tracks. We guarantee to get you back in business in three working days. That's for the Amstrad PCW. But hang on, right? Okay. <laughs> Collected by Group 4. <laughs> Remember Group 4, the famously, yeah, um, famously crapper, uh, couriers um, that got robbed, among other things. But uh, Group 4, come and collect it. Uh, but my point is, right, they've got a PCW repair service here. All the PCWs at this stage are still just about... Yeah, they are going to be under warranty. There might be... Yeah, I mean, starting... Might see some of them... Not... Oh, it's in, yeah, about, about a year ago they launched. But most people aren't. But I guess this is the time to start advertising, I suppose. Upgrades for the PCW. Light pens, £70. Pounds. Um... 3-inch disc worth four ninety five. They need two software packages. There you go. The PCW with that is £458.85. 15% at this time. You can see the PCW is getting really traction here with the stuff available for its Sage is supporting it with stuff. Um, yeah, it's kind of... High voltage, London's largest Amstrad dealer. 20 megabyte hard disk system. Connect up to 100 Amstrad computers together, plus printers. On demonstration now. I had no... Well, I knew this kind of thing exists. I've never seen anything like that. Used. Um, software. Well, it's all serious software here, really. Machines, word processors, all that kind of stuff. Available printers. They're selling daisy wheel printers for the PCW8256 um, for £200 because people want them, basically. All subsequent PCWs, of course, come with daisy wheel. And uh, the Oki Color Mate there is 229 And uh, the Star NL10 is 279 Epson FX85, 425 and um, there's Epson, you can still get Epson dot matrix printers, and they are very, very expensive. Advert for AMX PageMaker, the DTP package. So, you know, DTP on your Amstrad. I think, was it, uh, was AMX Stop Press and there was PageMaker? It's £50. You could digitise it for £89. 
AMX Magazine maker, which is presumably both of those things together. Oh, yes, yeah. AMX Magazine maker is a digitizer and page maker for £129. So what does is, is anything like what the digitizer does here? Digitizer connects to the expansion port and scans a complete picture in only five seconds. I've never seen one of those. So video hang on. Oh right, I see. Got you, got you, got you. I have seen one of these. It's a video digitizer. So you plug your cam video camera into it and you can Completely still image for five seconds and then it can digitize that into the Amstrad. Right. Gotcha. So I thought they were talking some kind of scanner or something. And the only scanners available at this time, I think, attached to a print head and you put it through your printer. Gladiator from Domark, a game I've. Oh no, I have heard of it because it's terrible. I think I owned a copy. Um, yeah, I mean, look at those wonderful graphics. Gladiator is not a typical Domark game, but it's good. There are elements of the other combat games, but more of an atmosphere. But the thing that resets it apart is a lack of hype. Yeah, might be the reason. Yeah, <laughs> it's not any good. Advert for, oh, a map for Equinox. My cousin had this and lent it to me. I remember it being quite confusing. Nice advert from DK Tronics. All their usual stuff. They put these out in a lot of magazines. Double page spreads the, usually towards the middle of the magazine. For their memory expansions, their silicon discs, light pens, speed synthesizers, and so on. Always like the look of these adverts. They're always really nicely done by DK Tronics. Lots of black and uh, a nice design. This month's Gallup chart. Batman from Ocean is at number one. Get Dexter is number two. CPC Classic. Commander number three. Spin Dizzy number four. Why? Oh, there's the budget games. Number six, number seven. I was going to say, well, there's no budget games. But there, there they are. Number six, number seven. At this stage, it's no guarantee the budget games are the best selling games. Very interesting. Later on, they had to separate out the budget games from the full price because budget games would just dominate the charts the superb tomahawk at number eight and the superb turbo esprit at number nine saboteur number 15 finest keepers 19 caves of doom 20 and uh, finest keepers has been in the chart for 11 months now 11 months in the top 20 um, nothing, uh, only, uh, only thing comes close in there is Formula One Simulator. And Batman's gone straight in at number one as well. Let's find the games. Disc 50. Disc 50. From the people who bought you Cassette 50. Yes, it's exactly the same games. All on one disc. You don't get the free watch this time by the looks of it. Um... We're not going to show much of the rubbish we've got. I mean, that looks fairly interesting there. But you can see the state of some of these games. I mean, you've got... If that's the best you can offer. The top two look quite interesting. That and there. And then card games. And then two things we push things around the screen. I just... Yeah, I... How much is it? 15 quid? 15 quid. 14.95. Right, Amstrad Computer User have uh, revamped their review section again, and we get Nigel, Liz, and Colin, who are, are actually apparently the same person, just providing different points of views for the games, which are now scored purely out of 20. Got Spiky Harold. So you get a description of the game at the top, and then they give their opinions down below. Bozo Meddler, that was the thing for hacking games. Um, so it just kind of doesn't say much in the advert there. But basically, if you want to hack your games, I think that's what uh, what you needed. Freelance trainer required for a job at Amstrad. Although it's in Staffordshire. 
Um, oh, yeah, they want someone in the Staffordshire area to train people on the Amstrad PCW. Right to the Mr. Uh, yeah, because what Amstrad did was um, split off their distribution into a separate company um, and then put this um, guy, there's stories in the Anna Sugar book about this. Um, it didn't, didn't work out, I think. But um, yeah, they, they sent this guy off and put him in charge of distributing Amstrad PCWs and CPCs and Lackley PCs um, to dealers and things like that. So they didn't have to worry about... Amstrad themselves could just worry about Dixons and Comet and so on. And then they had a wholly owned subsidiary that ran by this guy um, that dealt with the small individual dealers in towns. So you had... Uh, our town had a computer shop and they were an Amstrad dealer and they weren't part of a chain. And this is what Amstrad distribution was all about. It was to have this kind of separate thing where it's just they didn't have to worry about it um, when they're also having to worry about getting, you know, 60,000 computers off to Dixon's or what have you. And and then Mr. Jones in in Southampton at his computer shop, he, he wants, you know, four 6128s in stock. So that's what Amstrad distribution was all about. Psy Combat by Mirosoft there. Getting a decent review. Room 18 by CRL. Never heard of it. Tomahawk. Night Gunner. I have never played Night Gunner. That's digital integration, is it? That's interesting. By RJ Swift. Well... Never played that. Uh, that's interesting. It's very interesting. Watchmore Road, Camberley. I've been to Watchmore Road in Camberley. Green Beret, I imagine. Getting some good scores there. V, which is a Rather bad TV show. Giving it naught out of 20. Naught out of 20. That's probably the world's greatest fan of V, the TV series. I awaited the computer game with great interest. Unfortunately, my initial reaction was a little disappointing. Some of the truly magic touches of the TV show, like the cardboard dialogue and outrageous happenings, were missing. Hang on. I think that's supposed to be 10 out of 20. Um, they've done something wrong there and have given it naught. Because he doesn't hate it. He's just saying, yeah, I, I think that's a mistake. Last magazine of the year, December 1986, Aliens. I've got an alien attached to uh, CPC-464 there. Cascade of Cassette 50 fame are advertising some new games they've got out. What's this? Activator. All right. Perhaps they use this in, in Questor. New from Cascade, available from all good software suppliers or direct from us, because we're not a good software supplier. And we price everything a pound less than every other game because um, we just need to kind of flog our flog our tat. Right, by this stage, Amstrad Business Computing is split out into a separate publication. So we are just back to our hundred or so pages of CPC goodness without 40 extra pages whacked into the middle full of CPM stuff and word processing. Amstrad wraps PC rumours. Right, okay, the Amstrad PC is now out, uh, which is why Amstrad Business Computing is separated, clearly. And it has a thing about the uh, fans. Now, of course, the Amstrad PC 1512 is fanless because Amstrad put the power supply, all the power supply circuitry, is in the monitor which is the bit that gets hot. 
And as a result, because you're putting the power supply in the monitor, you can take advantage of the convection design of the monitor. So you don't need a fan. So all the heat just goes out through the top with all the heat from the CRT. It's fine. What happened was some dealers and rivals put around a rumour that the PC, Amstrad PC, was unreliable and not professional because it didn't have a fan. In fact, Amstrad took legal action in the end. And it, it really didn't help Amstrad at the beginning. What Amstrad actually did in the end was fit a fan anyway into the main case. It didn't need a fan. Um, but as Alan Sugar pointed out, if people asked for pink spots on their computers and what was stopping them buying them was a lack of pink spots, then he'd put pink spots onto the machine. What was the point of him saying, you don't need the pink spots when it's a difference between you buying his machine and someone else's? So, he, yeah, in the end, they just end up sticking um, fans in the PCW15, in the PC1512, even though it didn't need it. And the price of three inch discs is also coming down here to $2.99 per disc, although this is prior to the great disc shortage of 1988, because Amstrad had so many machines out there and was selling so many um, computers. So this is interesting. An art uh, article here about Ariola Soft, and it says, Ariola's fourth game doesn't run on anything. It's a game in itself. The Sega machine is a dedicated games computer and it shows the games are fantastic. I didn't know Ariola Soft were distributing the Mars system before, or didn't know anyone distributed it before Mastertronic. Now, of course, Mastertronic picked up Werewolves of London as uh, one of Ariola Soft's assets when they went bust at what, at the end of 87? So. Did they also pick up the Sega contract when Ariola Soft collapsed? That's really interesting. I, I always thought it was just Mastertronic got it, whereas it may have been someone else had it before Mastertronic. Interesting. And another advert for productivity software from one of the biggest software publishers in the world at the time. Digital Research Advertising and Amstrad Computer User with software for the Amstrad PCW 8256 and 6128. They got digital research graph for £40.95, which enables you to use basically graph out um, graphics from a spreadsheet, because in those days, spreadsheets were just spreadsheets. We think they can do the graphs and stuff themselves as part of that these days. But obviously back then, they were separate applications. So you can do all sorts of things, bar charts, pie charts, and so on. Uh, you have Digital Research Draw, which allows you to create organizational, organizational charts, flow charts, maps, or any shape or line drawing imaginable. Must look at these bits of software one day. And that is also £49.95. And you need an Amstrad PCW8256 or Amstrad CPC6128, or presumably a 464 with. Um, 64K extra RAM and a disk drive and a copy of CPM Plus, one would imagine. And a digital research are based in Newbury, RG131JB. So uh, they've probably long gone. But um, that's interesting because in fact, that is proper world class software on your Amstrad there. Was a letter here from someone in Nepal on the letters page, spread over this page here. And one of the things he says in Nepal, uh, from Nepal, is finally, may I comment on how well the 6128 tolerates the dreadful voltage fluctuations we experience here in Nepal? Several of my colleagues run their American hardware from expensive car battery inverter systems and advise me to do likewise. However, although my monitor wobbles from time to time, I've experienced no corruption of data and have only lost the memory when the supply has failed completely. Oh, we have prices for Amstrad PC systems now. Danum, the North's leading Amstrad business advice centre. 
So PCW, uh, PC1512, sorry, uh, mono with single drive, basically. It's 399 for mono, uh, 549 for color. And that would be XFAT. Twin disk drive adds 100 pounds. 100 pounds for an extra disk drive. Old Alan's marking it up there. What, Alan, is that costing you more, like, 40 quid for the disk drive and then the rest is markup? That's nuts. That's nuts. Um, want to add a, want to have a 10 meg hard disk in it. It's 699 mono, 849 for color. And if you want the max it out with 20 megabytes of hard disk storage, mono is 799, 949 for color. Um, so it's a big old jump. You know, the base system for black and white um, single drive systems, 399, very, very affordable. But if you're rich and you want that big color system with the hard disk, you're looking at 949 pounds. And of course, that's, I mean, you know, does that come with, no, it doesn't come with twin drives. It's twin drives is because, of course, the hard disk fits in where the second drive is. So you've kind of got one or the other. It's I think it's the same with my Amstrad PC2000. It's uh, you either have twin drives or you have a hard disk and a single drive and there's no other option. What is Sandpiper? A professional well-established company, blah, blah, blah. Okay. Sandpiper is a file manager. Sandpiper is accounts. Sandpiper is payroll. Sandpiper is going to be put out of business by Sage very shortly, one imagines. Advert from Cheetah. Uh, Maggie Thatcher there. Blowing things up with a rather naff joystick. And there's what I have. And I've got one of those here with me that I'm going to be reviewing soon. The Cheetah Mac 1 with micro switches. And uh, I mean, it's a bit unfortunate there because that's clearly meant to be Prince Charles, but... Diana actually looks a lot... Well, she basically looks like Camilla Parker Bowles, doesn't she, uh, in this? So, uh, yeah, and they're both compatible with the Spectrum because that now has... Um, oh, a competition on the next page for a quick... Not a quick shot. And a robot arm. Right, OK. Oh, they actually... Oh, oh. You can buy a robot arm from Spectra Video, the people who make the Quick Shot Turbo. Or, wow, never seen one of those. The Dart Scanner is available. You too can scan in pictures of Alan Sugar to your heart's content. $79.95. Now, the thing with this was that, yes, it indeed let you scan things in, but only if you could feed them through your Amstrad DMP 2000 printer, because what it did was it controlled the printhead in order to scan the image. So your treasured photograph would have to go through the printer stuck down to a bit of paper, and you'd have to hope that it didn't ride up and then have the fantastically aggressive printhead rip your prized photograph into bits Good results, but, um, yeah. And so we have something exciting here, the Rombo Vidi Digitizer, something that people will be more familiar with on the Amiga, but started life, I think, partly on the Amstrad. May well have been available for other systems. Costs £90, and David Radisic combines three of his favourite things, a laser vision player, Kate Bush, and his CPC6128. So he's going to get a nice still image. From that, and there's some results down there. Shame they're not, well, four colours anyway. Is that? That's Maggie. That's not Maggie Philbin, is it? Apparently, mode one gives the best uh, quality, according to the article here. Uh, he says, a very good, fast, cheap, and useful interface that will go a long way and give a lot of people fun for some time. Lots of uh, nice screen grabs there. Cartoons, of course, work particularly well because the limited colours. Multiface Klaxon. Multiface 2 is out and costs £46.95. They were a bit cheaper than that. 
and later on, weren't they? Tempest arrives on the CPC. I've never played it on the Amstrad. Must do it one day. When you read these magazines, you find all these titles you've never played. I mean, Cerebus. No idea. It's a knockout spread across two pages in a bizarre fashion, which is a terrible game reviewed on this channel. Did manage to get 13 out of 20 on one of those. Questal by Cast. Oh, that's the one we saw in the advert. Apparently their first game, aside from Cassette 50. When we go to the back of the magazine. There's some good offers from Amstrad Computer User here. The music system from Rainbird. Well, people forget Rainbird did all this serious software. 1095 and tape 1495 on disc. And the OCP Art Studio. That's probably where my dad got our copy from. Back of Amstrad Computer User. Um, and 1495 on disc, five pounds off. Absolutely brilliant system. The advanced art studio is even better, and I did get that eventually via a subscription to Amstrad Computer Use Amstrad Action, sorry, and a 99p copy of Thrust. If you um subscribe to Amstrad Computer User or renew to get a pound off, um, this is what our independent reviewers said. Again, if they were one person, you might get done under the advertising standards there. But, um, yeah. So that about wraps up my look at these Amstrad computer users from 1986. Yes, this video has gone on for far, far too long. Yes, I'm losing my voice. Yes, there's loads of stuff I could have showed you, but have not. We'll probably do this in about a year's time, I'm guessing, again. But thanks for watching. Thanks for supporting. And uh, if you made it this far... Well done, because um, even I'm struggling. <laughs> Ta-ra!